On Thursday, May 3rd, the Hopkinton Chamber of Commerce hosted a breakfast to thank Hopkinton's first responders. The event included Hopkinton police, fire, and DPW staff. The event also featured some guest speakers. Here's a look at the Hopkinton Chamber of Commerce first responders breakfast. Good morning, thank you for coming. Uh, like to get started so that uh, if anything does come up, you can get people out and about. Uh, like to have uh, Pastor Mike say, say a few words. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Mike Lawrence. I'm the pastor at Faith Community Church. It's a pleasure for us to host this. The uh, first responders are critical to our church, whether you're clearing the roads so that our people can come to church or you're making it safe, responding with kindness and compassion when we have needs. We deeply appreciate you. And the ability to sponsor this is a joy for us. I'm going to say a blessing. You've all eaten, so the food must have been good. Really good, right? We uh, really appreciate this spoon for all of your courtesy and bringing up a quality breakfast this morning. I'm going to say a blessing over everybody. So God, we just thank you. We thank you for those who have put themselves in a career where they're serving our community. So God, we pray for those who provide peace, that you'd give peace to their homes. Lord, we pray for those who bring compassion to those in need, that they would find the same when they're in need. And Lord, we thank you for those who are willing to protect the safety of our community. Lord, may you keep them safe as well. May you just bless them, keep them, and protect them in all ways. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Thank you, Mike, for those inspirational and appropriate words. Uh, and actually, I'd like to start with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. So could everybody please stand? Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America. To the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, I'm Scott Richardson, uh, President of the Chamber of Commerce, and I want to welcome you to this chamber sponsored, first ever and long overdue, thank you to Hopkinton's first responders. We are so pleased to be able to recognize and thank the police department, fire department, and the Department of Public Works for the extraordinary work that they do, uh, really 24-7, 365 days a year for all of us here in Hopkinton, as well as assisting other towns whenever requested. We want you to know that we do not take your commitment and service for granted. Uh, we wanted to show our appreciation uh, for all that you do to keep us safe, secure, and protected in our everyday lives here in Hopkinton. So how many of you had to call any of these departments for assistance? Please raise your hand. That's pretty much everybody but the first response. <laughs> so I know I have and uh, the results are always responsive and ex exemplary, including the time about 10 years ago when they assisted one of my daughters, I have a few, uh, there was essentially had her baby at the 495 Mass Pike toll booth because the baby just could not wait to get to the hospital. So who could ask for a better team to turn to during those times? I can't. So can we please have all first responders stand so we can thank you now. Tom Grill from the BAA, uh, Selectman John Catino, Claire Wright, and our town manager, Norman Kamala. Thank you all for coming to directly thank our first responders. I would now like to also kind of reiterate uh, 
Pastor Mike's thank you to our sponsors, uh, without whom we would not have been able to have such a fantastic event. And so when I mention your name, can you please stand and remain standing until we can thank you all together. Uh, so uh, anybody from the Faith Community Church, please stand. Uh, the Spoon, Sam and your team, you're always standing, so thank you. Uh, CJ at Bittersweet uh, has donated $5 gift cards and uh, our little certificates that we're handing out for all the first responders. Amanda Fauché has donated design and certificates and the table placards. Hiller's Cleaners has donated the dry cleaning for the tablecloths, so don't get too concerned if you spill your coffee. But the tablecloths are actually courtesy of Laura Berry and Katie Davenport, so please try not to spill your coffee. <laughs> so let's give them a nice round of applause. coordinating and setting up for this event, and I wanted to have the ringleader that made all this come together so seamlessly, uh, Christina Morrissey of Unibank and the Chamber's event co coordinator. Christina. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. As Scott mentioned, I am Christina Morrissey, um, and I manage the Unibank for Savings branch here in Hopkinton. Also actively involved in the Hopkinton Chamber of Commerce. As Scott mentioned, we have some amazing sponsors who help to make this event what it is today and bring us all together. Uh, along with our sponsors, we have a pretty amazing planning committee that showed dedication and commitment in bringing us here today. I'd like to take just a few moments to recognize the committee, so when I do call your name, please stand. So our, our um, Tim Kildoff, Executive Director of the Hopkinton Chamber for Commerce. Scott Richardson from Gorman Richardson Lewis Architects, also President of the Hopkinton Chamber for Commerce. Amanda Fauché, AV Designs. Brian Brown, Guaranteed Rate. CJ Balker, uh, Brookfield Partners. Scott Umbel, Metro West YMCA, Hopkinton Family Outdoor Center. Alan Connell, with Remax, Janine Coburn from Remax, and Nick Slotchy from Charles Bank Realty Group. <clears throat> Thank you so much. And just um, a final note, I'm, I'm so grateful to have worked with such an outstanding group of individuals. As quoted from Corotta Scott King, the greatness of a community is most accurately measured by the compassionate actions of its members. Thought that throughout the planning process, I was overwhelmed by the desire of the committee to make this such a meaningful event, down to every last detail. So thank you so much for making this such an success. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Christina. Where are we? So now to uh, some presentations and acknowledgement. Uh, part of the part of the morning. Uh, Tom Groke, uh, CEO of the BAA, has a tight schedule this morning, so I wanted to thank him for coming. I'd like to have him come to the podium. Thank you very much. I beg your pardon for pushing forward. I have to get to the eye doctor, and at my age, if something is wrong, you go show up at the doctor when they say to get there. <laughs> two brief observations from me from two perspectives, one institutional and one personal. Institutionally, as the head of the Boston Athletic Association, the people who are responsible for organizing the Boston Marathon, our thanks to all service providers, public safety, public works providers are profound. My wife is a teacher, so I know a lot about what it takes to be a public service worker and how hard it can be and how important all of that work is. And for us, there's perhaps no better example than this year of how important all of you are to those 30,000 people who come from around the world to run. The weather this year, 
wasn't like this. <laughs> it was, in a word, miserable. Jimmy Hooley, who some of you may know, the head of Boston EMS on that morning, said he had never seen a higher misery index <laughs> than the one that was on display that day. And yet people came out here knowing that they'd be okay. Police, fire, EMS would be there. Everybody at Public Works would have things as ready as they could be on such a wretched day so that they could have and would have and did have a memorable experience. 96% of them finished, which is daffy. I mean, why would you start? Never mind. <laughs> Keeping going. But everyone did. And it was a day that was memorable for everybody. Some of us were kicking around, I'm sure as you always do, a little Shakespeare before the race started. A little bit reminiscent of the Shakespeare play Henry V, where Henry V has a very small band of English soldiers at Agincourt, and they face five times the number of French soldiers that they've got. And what does King Henry say? You're really lucky to be here, because you're going to be able to say, I did this. And you've all heard of the, the famous St. Crispin's Day speech, the Brander Brothers, we shall be Remember, we few, we band of brothers, there are men in England now abed who will hold themselves a curse that they were not here. And rue the day when anyone shall say that they fought with us on St. Christmas Day. What did it say to these people? You're really going to, and everyone who wasn't here is really going to wish they were here with you, if you survive. <laughs> and that's what happened here. And people came out here and it got started the right way. They knew that when they came here, that they would be taken care of by everybody. The fields, the streets would be ready, despite however bad it might be. Public safety, police, fire, EMS would be there to take care of them, and it worked. They had a magnificent day. A <coughs> Times reporter who ran wrote the next day of his experience, and the headline was, it was unspeakably miserable. I can't wait to tell you about it. That's what happened for everyone and you led the way. And for me, that leads to my personal observation, which for me is more important. For people who do what you do, you provide a kind of leadership that's sometimes seen and acknowledged, but frequently not. We don't think about it, really. You interact with people every day, all the time, hundreds, sometimes thousands of times in the course of a day. Sometimes they're delighted because there's a baby being born in a car out at 495, or somebody's worried, or there might have been a break-in at the house, or is there a fire? Might be there. They're delighted for that. Now, some of you may have a different experience. If you're in public works, and you just closed a road that somebody may not, may, somebody wants to go down, they may not have nice words for you. They may not work out quite as well. But what happens is, in those instances, and hundreds and thousands of others, you show the way. How should people act with one another? Are they going to find a way to serve, to help, to make life a little bit better for others on a daily basis, or make it hard? And you make it easy. People see that, and they learn from you how it is that one deals with others. How does one show compassion? How does one make life work in a way that works for everybody? And you have to do that all the time. It makes society a better place whether you're doing it in pleasant circumstances or very difficult ones. And there are times when the pressure, I'm sure, is immense. The author, Ernest Hemingway, defined courage as grace under pressure. And that's what you display all the time. And it's a courage that makes things here in Hopkinton, in Boston, and everywhere a whole lot better. On behalf of a whole lot of runners, and a whole lot of other people whose world is a better one because of the way you lead. Thank you very much, and thanks for the chance to be able to say it. Thank you, John, for those uh, really great and appropriate words. Uh, John Catino is here to present you with uh, a marathon banner this year. Oh. So, um, Tom, as you know, we, uh, the Chamber of Commerce sponsored these marathon banners, and we want to thank you and the BAA for going along with this because it's, uh, 
it uh, is helping Parkview with the brand. It all starts here, and uh, we're really trying to um, expand that marathon footprint. And, and with the, the new cooperation and collaboration with the BAA, we're doing that. And so, and so this is a uh, this is to go back to your office and uh, thank you for uh, standing by us all the time and, and making uh, Hopkinton greater every year. Terrific. So. Thank you. Thank you. There are no greater partners. Lisa Nelson uh, from Senator Joe Kennedy's office, uh, come up. Congressman, I just Congressman, what did I say? Oh. Senator, sorry, got a promotion. It's not there yet. <laughs> so I just wanted to thank you for the opportunity to be here today and speak with you on, on his behalf. As I got off 495 on my way up from Attleboro and got onto 135, I wasn't exactly sure where the church was. But I thought it was a good sign that I was behind a fire truck, so I figured that they knew where they were going, and so I followed you right into the parking lot. Thank you very much for that. Um, and as Tom was saying, you guys are in a unique position where people are very glad you're there, but they hope they never have to see you. They hope they never have to call you. They hope they never have a fire. They hope they never have a break-in. But just to know that you provide that comfort that you're there if they need them is just so important. Um, he, uh, Congressman asked me to express his regrets at not being here personally and to share his sincere thanks to all of you for all that you would do every day. To say that we had a tough winter is truly an understatement. Uh, the toll our winter has taken on all of you is obvious in the smiles I see today due to the warm weather outside. It's a, it's a blessed relief. We often forget that it is not only a tough winter that impacts those of you in public safety, but the emergencies that you so willingly face on a day-to-day -day basis. To say thank you is really an understatement, but sometimes we have to rely on those simple words to express a deep, unwavering gratitude for what you do for us every single day. Our job is to do everything in our power to ensure that you have the tools, the equipment, and the manpower you need as you risk your safety for the safety of people you've never met. Our office is happy to help support federal grant applications that provide the tools you need to do your job. Congressman Kennedy pledges that he will always be by your side whenever you need him. His door, our door, will always be open and his phone and our phones will always be on. Please do not hesitate to reach out when we can be of service. And thank you very much. Thank you, Lisa, and I think he, you know, he will be senator and you know, <laughs> in the future. Um, let's see. Uh, now, uh, Dennis Giambetti is here uh, from Karen Spilka's office. Dennis? Sorry, I got late. I was staying in the back. Uh, first, I wanted to uh, send uh, send this to his regrets for not being able to attend this morning as you very well aware that uh, she's in the middle of the budget uh, at the State House, and uh, so that kind of takes up quite 24 by 7 of her time. Uh, but she wanted me to uh, express her sincere thanks for all the first responders. Uh, we all sleep a little bit better every night uh, knowing that you're there, uh, willing and able uh, to assist uh, people who are in need of your services, and we're forever grateful for your uh, actions. Thank you very much. Good morning. Everyone have a great breakfast? Good. Um, I'm so honored and grateful to have the opportunity to be here, and I would like to start off my comments by um, recognizing, uh, again, all of our first responders, and I'd like to give them another round of applause, recognizing that Hopkinton is one of the safest communities in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and that does not happen by accident. It happens because of all of the dedicated professionals who are in this room today. So again, a round of applause for all of our
You know, it's so important to recognize outstanding public service, and I want to echo some of the comments that were made earlier about, you know, we all have really busy lives, and sometimes um, we don't make the opportunity to say thank you, even though we all uh, believe it and feel it every day. Um, and so I want to thank the Chamber of Commerce and Christina and her team for making it possible for all of the rest of us to be here and kind of take time out, a special time out, to uh, make that thank you special and make you all feel appreciated um, every day. Um, I want to recognize sort of the work that goes on, or a couple of comments made about personal stories. And a lot of the work um, that all of you do is not seen every day, and that's sort of by design. A lot of it is sensitive, a lot of it is uh, challenging, and we rely on you to be there every day. And I will say that um, as a representative, I sometimes get calls, and I've gotten calls from people who need assistance with some challenging situations. And I will say that the professionalism and response that has come from every one of these departments um, really shows the heart and the connection to this community um, that is really characteristic of, of really all of the departments that we're recognizing here today. And I say as a, as a citizen living in the community of Hopkinton, um, all of you are very well represented by, by these incredibly committed folks. I think it's also important to recognize, we had Tom Brilk here earlier. Everyone in Hopkinton knows how wonderful these departments are, but it's worth noting that all of you have a special day and sort of an international influence one day every year because the work that you do and the teamwork and the coordination and the training that you have and that you um, show uh, every day, but in particular on Marathon Day in protecting the residents of Hoppington, the residents of the region, of the state, of the country, and in fact internationally uh, is worth recognizing because uh, we all know how important it is to be Boston strong. We could not be Boston strong, Massachusetts strong without the really important work that you do every day and on that day. And so on behalf of all of the residents of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, uh, I want to say thank you from the heart uh, for uh, all the meaningful and important work you do and the quality with which you do it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And again, just a pleasure and honor to be here. If I may, uh, may I have Chief Lee, Chief Slayman, John Westerling up here, please? This is not another budget talk, is it? <laughs> no, we're not discussing budget. <laughs> I, th I think it also needs to be said that at this moment, this may be the safest square footage. <laughs> If, even even the presidential guard does not meet this level of service. Thank you so much. Um, first off, thanks to the chamber, thanks to the Faith Community Church, and thank you for the organizing committee for making this happen. Uh, it is a great joy for me to be here this morning uh, on behalf of your colleagues at Town Hall on this delightful occasion, honoring and celebrating your exceptional service to community Hopkinton, to our dearest firefighters, police officers, DBW personnel, with no immodesty, it can be said, you all make, and I disagree with you, Representative, you all make Hopkinton the safest community in Massachusetts. And given my international flavor, I think the safest community in the world. That's our vision. <laughs> By your collective kindness, compassion, resourcefulness, and unselfish and generous efforts, you have helped Hawkington become the safest place
to work, live, and play. And your dignity and sterling character, you all have gained the admiration, love, and esteem of this wonderful community. And today, the business community, through the Distinguished Chamber of Commerce, is expressing the gratitude of many and sharing the token of heartfelt appreciation for all your inspiring, untiring, and faithful efforts. Especially, and this needs to be said, especially those of your loved ones, your families, who make it possible for all of you to save community Hopkinton. And on behalf of, again, our colleagues at Town Hall, John Westerling, Chief Slemon, Chief Lee, thank you, thank you for saving community Hopkinton with honor and dignity. Thank you. Thank you, Norman. Uh, and now we actually have some uh, exciting presentations. Uh, Tim Kildoff is here. It's okay, you can, you can apply. <laughs> Well, we do have a couple of presentations. This is nice, great to get together, great to have a nice breakfast, great to say thank you to all of you. But we, we wanted, to, the committee wanted to find a way to, to stretch this thank you out a little bit. And we, uh, I, I hope you'll be pleased with uh, the result. First of all, uh, on the way out, uh, we have for each of you individually, not as a group, um, a certificate from the chamber, but even more importantly, a citation from uh, Representative Dykema and also an individual citation from the, the Senate, uh, the soon to be Senate President, uh, Senator Spilka. Uh, and that's on the, on the way up. So we we're trying to find a way to, to, to have a lasting, to, to create a lasting thank you. Uh, we think that uh, we've done that. So if I could have uh, Chief Slayman. Uh, over here in the middle, please. John Westerling on the far left, and uh, Chief Lee. I hope I got, I hope I have this order right. <laughs> Chief, <laughs> Lee, Chief Lee over here. <laughs> Sam, where are you? We need some help uh, in, in Christine, if you would. We'll let you do the unveiling, and then I want to give you a, a, a little background on, uh, on this particular gift. So, when you're ready, if you do the unveiling. So, all together now, ready? So these flags are created by uh, a company uh, by the name of uh, Flags of Valor. Let me just read to you a little, uh, a little card that uh, we received. The, the company is made up of veterans, uh, some of, uh, all of whom have served uh, in action uh, in various parts of the world. But on behalf of the men and women of Flags of Valor, I want to personally thank you for supporting our business and our nation. We believe made in America still means something and we love our country. This flag was made, by, uh, made in the United States by combat veterans. We hope you'll find an appropriate place to, uh, to display these uh, in your respective headquarters. And again, thank you for what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. It's appreciated.
Thank you. You know, I, um, I attend a lot of these events, and uh, I, I love coming to these. The um, uh, Eagle Scouts honors, retirements, grand openings, uh, veterans breakfast, and most of the time I come and Representative Dykeman is there. And I remember about four or five years ago, I turned to her, she just gets up and starts speaking. I said, how do you do it? And she said, you'll manage. You'll burn it, you'll get it down. And now I do. I, after a European chairman here, wow, uh, you, you, you get it. And so when it really comes down to it, thank you. That's really all the town wants to say is, is thank you. You know, we, we think of our police and fire as first responders, but um, when everything's going well, nobody really thinks of DPW as first responders. I remember I made fun of uh, Mr. Westerling when he was uh, asking for first responder vehicles for, for water and sewer. And I said, I don't get it. And then I stopped and thought about it a minute and realized, well, when there's a water break or sewer break, first responders, you get out there. And you know, when there's a giant storm, um, you know, people want their roads taken care of. And, and you're out there and you do it. They, when we, all those trees were down and the, the coordination between fire, police, and DPW. I remember I was out there, I had my own chainsaw to get through a few places in one of my trucks. You know, as I was, a uh, few of you may know that, that I was facility director at uh, Golden Pond. And I, I learned quickly that when things are going well, you don't hear a thing. But you, many of you might know that when uh, something goes wrong with a senior citizen, they let you know. They really let you know. And, uh, and that's the way it is with, with the town, you know, and, and many of you hear when stuff is going badly. But I don't think that we say enough when things are going well. And so from your boss's boss's boss, the, chair, the, the board of selectmen, we just want to say thank you. We really do appreciate everything that, everything that you do and, and everything that uh, that comes upon, upon you guys, you just handle it. Uh, number one, the, 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 getting back to the DPW facility again, I mentioned that before. Uh, when I first started as, as selectman, I was invited to the, the facility. And so I sent over a couple dozen pizzas ahead of time. And I watched where they brought them. We went to the locker room, conference room, break room, storage room. And I said, oh my gosh, how do you do it? But you guys always manage to still make it make it through and get everything done. Now there's a great new facility, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna keep going from there. We, we need another, I know I need another fire fire facility on the other side of town, but we're gonna get that too. And uh, so again, from from the board of selectmen and the town of Hopkinton, thank you very much. And uh, we're gonna try and make this a, at least an annual event because you, you guys all deserve it. You the women, everybody else. Thank you again. So uh, that concludes kind of the talking part of the session. Obviously, everybody's well, welcome to stay. There is still a little bit of food left, uh, so help yourself. And uh, again, in, in uh, closing, again, I just want to reiterate my thanks to uh, everybody here on DPW, police, fire, uh, and again, uh, the chamber committee that helped put this together. Um, so be safe out there, but if you do need help, you know who to call. Thank you.